So today I just want to show off these fabric boards that we finished up. We've got three and I want to talk about um, some of the problems that we still need to solve when when doing this. So this first one is a Hawaiian graphic on the top and you can see I only just actually noticed when I started filming and the the graphic is actually the wrong way around. On the bottom it's got this nice stripes. Next one I got is it's got this I don't know what to call this pattern, but it's got this on the top, and this also has the stripes on the bottom. And the last board is the same as that one, but just the pattern's reversed top to bottom. So as far as the grip itself, well first off, I want to mention that the whole idea behind the fabric grip is that it's something that's, that's non-abrasive. So that it allows you to put the board in a backpack or in a locker or just to carry it with you. A lot easier without damaging your stuff and to still provide some good grip and so I've got to say that I'm actually really really happy in, in balancing and in how it's balancing all of that it's it's functionally quite grippy uh, on shoes it's way way better than bare wood or you know the bare plastic that you have on like the penny skates and um, it also helps that it's a nice wide um, board for its size and the way that we found to apply the fabric to the wood is also uh, working out really, really well. And for that, what I've ended up doing is um, basically is we're actually getting the full sheet of fabric out and we're, we're laying it out nice and flat without any wrinkles and try to smooth it out as much as possible. And then we take our sheet of wood and we use a roller to put the wood glue onto the wood in a nice thick layer and then we lay turn the wood over and we lay it down onto the flat sheet of fabric and that has been the easiest way we found to do that and it's seems to be reliable and it seems to result in a really really nice glue bond and it's a lot harder to mess up and have big wrinkles show up that you have to stretch out. However, if we look at the boards with the, the stripes, you can tell that even doing all that, that because of the stretch of the fabric, that the patterns tend to be pretty distorted. And you could never tell that on a pattern like this, or like this, when you've got lots of straight lines, um, especially when you've got straight lines next to other straight lines, like of the stringer and the lines of the graphic um, or the fabric, it becomes really, really apparent just how distorted and pulled the fabric gets. So that's one problem. And I think the easiest way to solve that is just to avoid graphics or fabrics with the straight lines. Next problem, I don't know how much you can see this, but there's some uh, there's some marks horizontally across the, the board. And this is actually from uh, the mold. The mold itself is leaving behind these marks because it's CNC'd. It's really, really rough cnc because you don't need that precise of a surface to bend the Baltic birch. However, we've had some instances where the fabric is actually picking up on that pattern and leaving it glued into the final board. And that's obviously not something we want. And I think part of the problem causing that is during the layup process, sometimes we'll get glue onto this top side of the deck or the bottom side where the, where the, where the fabric is. And so we have to wipe off the glue and we'll do that with a wet sponge. And I think as long as the fabric stays dry, it hasn't been a problem. So this one stayed dry and there's no marks. We just need to have a better glue up process so that we never have to be cleaning up glue from the finished surfaces. And uh, that's just due to the plies sliding around as we're using our, using our glue roller. Next issue is on the edge here, uh, the sides of the stringers. 
we have an issue of glue oozing out. And when the glue oozes out, we're left with a, uh, an unfinished, un, not very nice looking surface that we're gonna have to clean up. And cleaning up that surface is quite challenging. And I'm not sure how best to do it. It should be possible to use a nice round over bit on a router if you can find a way to align it with, so this edge is perfectly straight. And if you can find a way to index it to this straight edge somehow um, and have it round over at a set, de at a set depth, then that would be a really nice and easy way to finish this edge and get rid of any excess glue. But we can't rely on a router bearing because there's no surface to write on. We're gonna be rounding this all off. And we can't rely on the flat surfaces on the side because they're not consistent enough. So possibly the thing to rely upon might be some jig that we align to the edges that allows the router to travel from point to point here and is relying on an external jig that you're setting the board into and aligning it up aligning the board and the edge up with the jig um, another possible solution to that is just to perfect the amount of glue you're, we're using and not have any squeeze out that would be ideally better but I think that's going to be too inconsistent to rely upon. Finally the last issue and you can see here the fabric has kind of pulled out and started to become tattered I believe is the word and so when I'm sanding the edges um, it'll sand away the wood and it'll leave a f it'll leave the, the fabric doesn't sand as easily as the wood and it's left some difficulties in finishing the boards off uh, smoothly and um, yeah so it's got a, almost a little tear here on this one and, uh, and it's gotten pretty bad right here trying to fix it up and round it off and anyway it's hasn't been the, the nicest stuff when it comes to, to sanding and finishing. And I think part of the, so um, if you hand sand and you're able to sand away and sand the, the fabric into the wood, that'll work. But if you sand the other way, that's when it starts to fray and tatter. And if you have an, a random orbital sander, um, it'll randomly sometimes work and it'll randomly sometimes tatter and tear. It would be a lot of unnecessary effort if the solution was to just do all this hand sanding. Um, that's something that would be better to try to avoid. So I'm thinking perhaps maybe a solution might be lower grit sanding. I used I think 120 so maybe more like 200 might be enough to uh, allow you to, it, it probably won't sand any better when it goes in reverse and, and is sanding it the wrong way but it probably won't tatter it anymore and it'll probably just be a little less effective. It might be the trickiest thing to solve because sanding is just so much, um, I mean ideally when, when, when we're cutting this out it'll be milled out by a CNC. Um, and so all the manual work is going to be in the layup and in, and in the sanding. And the sanding is what takes the most time. So if we're trying to sell these, which is the idea, the hope, then, uh, then yeah, spending tons of time sanding is just not what we want. But so the last thing I want to address is this bottom stringer. So right now we're just using the Baltic birch for that. But what I'm really, really wanting to do is have the the top eighth inch of the stringer be bamboo. I think that will look really really good 
it'll look better than the Baltic for sure. I'm just trying to get some, my hands on some bamboo. And I'm just really, really, really hoping that our press can, can, can bend the bamboo into this tail shape without any problems. Yeah, because that's, that's the one thing that might hold us up with the bamboo. And the thing is, if I, if I order a full sheet of bamboo, that's going to give us enough bamboo for tons and tons of decks. And that, at that point, and at that point, if, if, if I've just got tons of bamboo that I need to use, we're just going to have to find the way that's going to make it work. Even if, even if it means like pre-pressing the stringers. And that would be a huge pain. And I'd really want to avoid that, but for, for the bamboo, it might be worth it. So as we go through and continue to try to develop and perfect these, we're at the point now where we're just going to be churning out lots and lots of boards, hopefully. Just getting better and better and better at doing it, solving little problems as we go, but also producing, you know, a lot of boards in our wake. So at the point where we just want to try to test and see what the interest is in these boards and get them in the hands of some different people to just kind of offload at kind of a minimum price just because we're going to be producing so many until we have the, a real perfected product. So I'm going to be trying to hand these out to people, um, to hopefully offload. And for these early ones, which have minor problems with them, maybe like 20, 30 bucks a board. I'm hoping once these are all dialed and we got the bamboo going and we have a nice finished product that I might be able to sell these for maybe 60 bucks. Um, in addition to that, we also want to ultimately move to selling these as completes so that we have some control over ensuring that they're being set up to ride well. Because that's something that I feel is going to be worth quite a lot for possibly the most likely people to be buying these. And I want them to be able to stand on them and not just be impressed by what we've done with the board, but in how it actually performs as a complete setup. So I guess that's the update for now on the Fabric Bullnose Mini Cruisers. Um, I probably won't be doing another update on this again until I've got some bamboo going and I'll report on how that's turned out. Until then, longboard technology, over and out.